Caddis Maximus here. We're going to do a little review of this Porter Cable 2610. This is one of the 2000s generation. I believe this is made in Mexico. They actually, about five years ago or so, replaced these with Chinese made units, which are really terrible. These, in turn, replace the American made units. This is a 2620, so same 2600 series. This is the last of the American made ones. These are the ones people really remember. They had a really nice high end trigger on them. Really super well built drills. Really like these old American ones. They replaced them with these, which are definitely not as good. As you can tell, this came with an industrial da Jacobs chuck. This unit came with a really terrible plastic chuck. You can see it has a kind of a long spindle, but they're actually, that gives you access to a couple of flats to replace the chuck. And so that's what I, I'm going to end up doing. Some things that they did improve on was they they still came with a belt hook like the old American made ones, but it could be put on either side. This is after they were owned by DeWalt. So they use the exact same trigger. This trigger you can actually pull out and put into a DeWalt drill. Uh, but one thing I'll give them credit for is versus the old American made ones, I like them, but the handle was just a bit deep. If you had smaller hands, uh, and I've known people who've had these, they find them uncomfortable just because of how big around the grip was, but it did allow for outsized trigger electronics. So they did reduce that diameter, and I'll tell you the ergonomics are pretty good, especially if you want to hold it like this. That's why they have this grip, so you can get right behind, so you can grab it, do that, and then it helps you uh, poke holes pretty quickly. If you have to drill a bunch of holes repeatedly, pretty smooth trigger. Does indeed still have a trigger lock, matchstick reverse. Not a lot else to say. I have a couple chucks here, so what I'm gonna do is demonstrate how terrible these, so many of these hand tightening chucks are terrible. On nice half inch cordless drills, they have carbide teeth in them, but on these, they just slip. And so I'm gonna do my little demonstration on my three quarter inch installers bits. These are notoriously hard to drive because they have tiny little 516 stems on them. And what's the point of a drill if you can't use commonly used tools? So anyway, I was going to replace it with a Jacobs Industrial Chuck. But I think I'm going to go with one of these impact chucks. You can actually find these at uh, home improvement stores. They're sold as impact driver drill chucks. And I think it's just the only place they could find the market. These were patented. I think the patent has run out. Uh, but these are actually a impacting chuck. They are like an impact wrench where the, you actually hold on to the impacting weight. They don't, a lot of drill manufacturers, actually, I Porter Cables, surprisingly enough, with the old American made ones, they have some half inch drive versions that did come with uh, the half inch version of these chucks. They can be hard on the front bearing. This is all ball and needle bearing, so I will give them credit for that. Interestingly enough, we can see when we turn the chuck, the fan or the motor moves in the same direction. Double reduction on a 2500 RPM drill, seven amps, so it has plenty of power. It's kind of interesting that they chose to go with a double reduction gearbox, but it does, uh, like with their DeWalt counterparts, they're single reduction. They just have a big drive gear and a little motor gear to give them the 2500, so I think that is interesting that they're double reduction. And just gives a little bit more gear surface area, so I think that's okay. We'll give this a quick run, show how the chuck, the current chuck operates. That is a pretty loud fan in there, but pretty linear uh, variable speed. Let's go do a little drill test. Definitely is a bit noisier. I figured I'd just give you a quick, uh, just so you can hear how the old American Maze one sounded. Anyway, the purpose of the installer's bit test is I've shown how uh, <laughs> drills with proper industrial Jacobs chucks, key chucks that you tighten in every hole, or impact chucks can grip even a tough to drive bit like this. But this thing, I'm gonna wrench down with everything I got. <clears throat> we'll see how quickly it starts spinning in the drill. Just immediately, it's just pointless. So, I'm going to go swap out this chuck. I'll give Porter Cable some credit. I pulled off the chuck and I thought, that's kind of big. And it is. 
they're using half inch 20 thread. So that's a half inch spindle on a 3 8 drill. I'll give them credit for that. That's actually a nice extra thick spindle. And here's the chuck that came off of it. We can see it's a Japanese made chuck, not a, you know, so I, the manufacturing quality of this chuck is pretty good, but it's still just a crappy hand chuck. So now I'm going to have to uh, see what my options are. Actually, half inch spindle 3 inch chucks are kind of hard to come by, so I'll end up putting this half inch chuck on here. This is a Jacobs 500 series. We'll see if it cuts the mustard. All right, a little odd to have a half inch chuck on this drill. It's a bit overrated, but every once in a while you may have something larger than 3 8 that you may want to spin fast. You just have to be smart enough to realize that this does not have the torque of a half inch drill. But it could be handy. So the Jacobs 500 series, there's a couple different versions of these. Full collar ones, which are for cordless drills, some way we have a lot of low speed torque, which cordless drills are excellent at. Um, we can get the full grip or they have some type of spindle lock. In this case, I have to use a split collar one, so the 500 series is the best I got. And it's probably a little bit better just because it gives you a, gives me just a bit more surface area. Let's see if we can't drill this hole now uh, with a bit better chuck. Yeah. Even though these are ratcheting. And it seems every once in a while you won't have the shank and they're quite perfectly straight and it'll kind of lock up. But as you drill, it will uh, kind of reseat itself, causing it to get loose. But after retightening this, it actually works out just fine. And it actually has plenty of power, even not running at full speed in the variable range. Even at 2500 RPM, this actually isn't bad. As we can see, upgrading to a better chuck results in bits not slipping. Alright, pretty simple tool. We will pull off this. What is nice is this can be bulky, so if you don't like this at all, you can just remove it. That is glass fiber or fiberglass reinforced nylon, 33%. A third of this plastic is actually fiberglass, which is generally a standard. First we'll take a look at the back, take a look at these brushes here. Of course these are T20 screws. Nice to see that they are using proper plastite screws. Plast, come on camera, plastite screws are these where they have the secondary set of threads on them that are just extra tall to get extra grip in that plastic. Cheaper manufacturers don't do that. Or manu cheaper drills don't. And when they're trying to cut corners they won't use the, the because those screws are just a bit more, a little bit more expensive than regular uh, plastic screws. Whoop, I got stuck on the back there. Easily replaceable power cord. It is not over molded. Whoop, I'm pushing the trigger out there. Not a lot else here. I think the whole drill, yeah, is all fiberglass reinforced nylon, so that's not too bad. Since this was essentially made by DeWalt, it's using a similar system, although this isn't using clock springs, oddly enough. It's just using these kind of snap-on connectors. But it is, uh, I do approve of them, they, we do have a copper wire in there that's connected to the brush. That serves actually two purposes in this situation. One is when the brush gets too short, it reaches the end of the wire and prevents the, it from overwearing on the commutator there as well as offering just a little bit lower resistance and a little bit power, better power delivery to the motor. As far as the switch, it's reasonably overrated. We can see it's rated 125 volts, 10 amps. That's a reasonable amount of overrating. We can see this is a little bit cheaper than the DeWalt counterparts. The DeWalt counterparts have like little plastic tabs where all these wires are like nicely organized into. That's missing here. Yet arguably versus the clock spring, uh, style that DeWalt uses, these brushes may be a little bit better. So it's interesting that even though this is after Black & Decker bought Delta and Porter cable, 
Porter Cable still was able to set them, kind of set themselves apart and do some of their own design choices for their branded products versus their parent company. A lot of times when parent companies buy out a, a brand, I mean, that's the end of that brand. Uh, any, you know, their factories are shut down and all their engineers are fired and there's just, they just, the parent company just puts their name or puts the company that was bought out like Porter Cable on one of their own products. And I think the new Porter Cables are kind of like that. They're just absolutely terrible. But this is still back when they were relatively decent. Take a quick peek at the uh, gearbox here. Screws are a little short. On all these tool, all power tools that have all these plastic bodies, the screws don't lock in like they do on metal body tools. And they do get loose. I mean, every used tool I found, including this one, those screws just get, periodically get loose. They're in plastic. So you, really good idea that any tool that you use on a regular basis, you know, once a month, check those screws, give them a little tighten. What is nice is that there's a lot of clearance behind these screw bosses. So if the plastic ever, ever strips out or the screws just continue to get loose, you can just drill all the way through and put a little nut and bolt through there and then it really won't get loose. And I've done that on some tools. I may show that at some point in the future. We do have a gasket like they did in the old American made ones. There is a fair amount of grease in here, which is nice to see. True all ball needle bearing. Porter Cable's done this for a long time, which is helical cut gears on the first stage where the motor pinion is really small. He slanting the gears makes the teeth a little bit wider Makes them more quiet because they engage in a progressive fashion, but they do have a touch amount of slips. So under certain situations, straight cut gears are better, but that's complicated engineering. And then we do have straight cut gears for the second stage. And so you can see the reason they might use uh, a double reduction is because it affords you just to have a little bit more robust uh, motor spindle, and this offsets the load onto more steel. It's a little bit more expensive, adds a, it is also uses up a little bit more space, but the trade-off is uh, give same given materials, you should have a good lifetime out of the gear teeth. What we can also see here is these weird little shape things there and there. Those are little bosses that plug in here and here. What that does is that locks up or connects the front half of the gear case to the diaphragm, preventing the gear case from shifting back and forth. I've run into a lot of Makita tools that have had those that they have not had that, uh, including like the 6013 BR, which is their big half inch drill. And so, there we go. Then I, the thing about having those bosses, and then secondarily, this whole diaphragm actually insets into this gear case. It means that the gears when you take it apart and put it back together are going to be in the exact same alignment. And as it gets used under, you know, high torque situations, places where it may get jammed and that type of stuff, the diaphragm is going to shift around and when the gears, you know, canter one way and then canter the other, it allows the forces to get concentrated, will cause excessive wear, and then it'll canter the other way. And it's amazing. Gears can wear out 10 times faster if they're allowed to, you know, shift position, but if they're held uh, in the exact same alignment, then they can last a very long time. So what can I say? The 2000 series before they went to the Porter Cables that look like Transformers, not quite as good as American-made ones, but they still actually had proper Porter Cable DNA and actually overall half-inch spindle, all ball needle bearing construction with a proper diaphragm and front half construction. Decent uh, high power delivery brush setup. Good ergonomics. Still is a pretty decent drill. And if you run into this generation of Porter Cables, I think they're definitely still good and still worth your money. I found this one used for like 10 bucks and it had a terrible chuck and all I had to do was swap out the chuck with something a little bit better. And that solved those issues. And it is a little bit hef heavier a little bit heftier, but it's kind of kind of like it now. 
not a bad 2500 rpm drill and the most modern you know if you go to home depot today in 20, 2022 their 2500 rpm drills have an eight amp motor and this was seven amps almost you know i think these came out 20 years ago so you know 20 years ago or almost 20 years ago Porter Cable already had 7 amp motors on their 2500 RPM drills. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.